Hello, in this video let's discuss third question of today's contest. You are given an integer array capacity. A subarray L2R is considered still stable. Its length is at least 3 and the first and last elements are equal to the sum of all elements strictly between them. Capacity of L is equal to capacity of R is equal to the sum of all elements in between L and R. Capacity of L plus 1 and so on till capacity of R minus 1. Return an integer denoting the number of stable subarrays. A subarray is a contagious non-empty sequence of elements within an array. The constraints are the length is at least 3 and at most 25 and the values are minus 1 in n to 1 in n. For example, let's take the first example 9, triple 3 and 9. So 3, 3, 3, this is stable subarray because the first and last are same and middle also the element is 3. So the total sum in the middle is 3. So first element is equal to last element is equal to sum in between. So this is a good subarray and then this is also a good subarray because 9 and 9 are equal and the middle sum is 9. So the answer is 2. So firstly, if all elements are positive, we have seen that elements can be 0 or negative. What if the elements are only positive? It is very simple, right? Because let's say, let's take a value A. So if we take a value A, if all elements are positive, if all elements are positive, then we need to check only adjacent occurrences of same values, right? So we can check if, if the sum between these is equal to A or not. And sum between these is equal to A or not. So no need to compare these two. Why no need to compare these two? Because the only possibility is the whole sum here must be equal to A. But this is already A because there is other other occurrence of A between these. So that the sum of all the remaining elements should be 0. This is not possible because we consider only positive elements. So if the elements are positive then it is very simple. We can try to store all the values indices in a map. So 0, 2, and so on. And then we can loop all the values and then we can try to find the sum between every two indices and if that is equal to this index then increase the answer compare these two increase the answer and so on we can find the answer very simply but how to find the subarray sum between these elements should we go through all the uh, all the indices in between and find the sum no we can use prefix sum so what is prefix sum let's say we have a big subarray like big array big array and then we want the element sum from here to here. So firstly what can we do? We can simply traverse all the indices and then we can find the sum. But it will be O of n. So how can we optimize this? How can we find the subarray sum in O of 1? If we have many queries. Because it is simply like queries, right? Because we want from 0 to 2. We want from 2 to next element. We want from next to text. And so on. We have some queries. We have to find subarray sum in O of 1 for all these queries. Else the time complexity will be exceeded. So how to find the subarray sum? So, the sum from here to here. So, what is that? It is simply the sum from prefix to initial element to this minus initial element to the one before that we want. This is what we want. So, we are finding the before element and prefix until that. So, this minus this will be the answer we want. Right? So, instead of thinking with respect to two integers, what if we try to store the sums with respect to zeroth index? So, that we can only have one base and then we can compare others. For example, so let's say this is the sum till here is 3, so this all, the sum till here is 4, here it is 5, here it is 10, here it is 15, here it is 20. So we have something like that, right? And now if we have some query to find the subarray sum from indices 2 to 5, what we can do? That is simply the subarray sum till 5, the prefix sum till 5 minus prefix sum of 1 because prefix sum of 1 will include this and this and prefix sum of 5 will include this and this all these and this is what we exactly want so prefix sum from i to j the sum from i to j how can you find it is simply prefix sum of j minus prefix sum of i minus 1 if i is 0 it is 0 if it is positive then we can do prefix sum of i minus 1 so in this way similarly we can store the prefix sum first and then we can loop through all the values and then we can find the sum in between and if that sum is equal to this value, then we can simply increase the answer and return the answer. But this is not the case. The elements are not only positive, that can be negative also. So now what can we do? So now let's think only with respect to index. For example, we are at this index and the value is a. So what are the answers that we can get from this index? So how many indices are possible in the backwards to get a good subarray ending with this and starting from that? So we are thinking we are only at index i and we want the number of indices j 
such that J2I is a good subarray. So when we, when it will be a good subarray? It will be a good subarray if V of I is equal to V of J and which is equal to total sum which we discussed earlier. And now, so now we got I, we got J, we got that sum as middle and is equal to V of I. So from this what we can we get? We can get that what is the sum from I to J? What is the total sum of this whole subarray? It will be simply 3 into V of I, right? Because V of I, this is also V of I, the sum is also V of I. So it is simply 3 into V of I. So now the main goal is reduced to when we are at index I. We want the number of indices J in the past such that the sum in between these is equal to 3 into V of I. So we reduced the base from 2 indices to 1 index because till before we are thinking about 2 indices. We want I and J such that the sum in between is equal to any of the element. But now what we are thinking, we got that when we are at index I, we want the number of indices in the past such that the sum from this to this is equal to 3 into V of I. How can we get that? So now it is simple, right? So we can we can try to track the prefix sum. We, like we can try to tra track the sum. When we are at I, if we try to find the index with sum 3 into V in the backward, that is what we exactly want. But is only sum enough to track. Let's say we are at index like we are at index I and we got an index J such that this sum is 3 into V of I. So if we get 3 into V of I, is J to I a good subarray? No. Because V of J must be equal to V of I, right? Because that is the base condition. So the sum is only not sufficient. There can be many other values of this value such that sum is equal to 3 into V of I. But the good subarray is where only V of J is equal to V of I and the sum is, is equal to 3 into V of I. So now with value, like with the sum, we also have to track the value where this sum we have achieved. So the pair is important. The pair V of J and 3 into V of I is important, right? Only sum is not important. So now what we want? So we want prefix sum of J minus prefix sum of I minus 1 is equal to 3 into 5. We discussed, right? So when we are at index I, we want the sum till j. This should be 3 of i. 3 into v of i. So how can we write this in terms of prefix sum array? This is simply prefix sum of j. So prefix sum of j minus prefix sum of i minus 1. So which is exactly equal to 3 into v of i. So now when we are at index j, what is the information that we want with respect to i? It is simply like it will be good subarray when this condition will be satisfied. So this will be satisfied when prefix sum of j is equal to prefix sum of i minus 1 plus 3 into v of i. So simply we want the count of indices i such that ps of j is equal to ps of this, the whole this, right? So now what we got? When we are at index j, we want the number of occurrences of this value. How can we find? So we want some occurrences of some value, right? So simply we can use map. So what we can show in the map? Simply we can store two values in the map. What are those both? Because we want mainly two informations. The first thing is what is the index? Like what is the value? So what is the V of i? Where this is possible and V of i and then and then we also want the sum, right? So we also want the sum. And what is the sum? That is simply prefix of i minus 1 plus 3 into V of 3 into 3 of that value. So if i is 0, this will be 0, like we will make this 0 if it is 0, i is equal to 0, else we will make ps of i minus 1. So by using this in a map, then we can increment this, right? And whenever we are at index i, whenever we are at index j, then by getting a map, we can get what is the count of the subarrays, what is the count of indices we want with exact value. So let's check the code for more clarity. So simply maintain prefix sum, and then prefix sum of 0 is equal to v of 0 because for the first index that is the prefix sum itself and then loop through all the indices and the prefix sum of i is equal to this is how we calculate the prefix sum right because if we have sum till i minus 1 what is the sum till i the sum till i is equal to sum till i minus 1 plus the value to index i so simply p of sum i is equal to prefix sum of i minus 1 plus v of i and then use the map of pair of pair map pair and the count so start from 0 to n so start from 0 to n and then so 0 to n so firstly what is the value simply the value is 
v of j because we are at v of j and what is the prefix sum till now the prefix sum till now is ps of j and now when can we f when can we insert in the map we can insert in the map only if we are at more than index 2 because if we have only two elements we can't compare it because for good separate the length must be at least 3 because first is equal to last is equal to sum in between what we can do if the length is only 2 we can't do anything so we have to start inserting in the map only if the index we are at crosses greater than equal to 2 only then the prefix subarray will be length 3 and then we can try to insert in the map so simply int i is equal to j minus 2 so this is the index which is exactly 2 indices before and then this is the value and then what is the prefix sum till then if i is more than or equal to 0 like if i is more than 0 it will be s of i minus 1 if i is 0 this is simply 0 because the prefix sum till before 0 is meaningless right so for example we have this so this is index 1 so what we are thinking we we are we want prefix sum of i minus 1 right so for prefix sum of i minus 1 i must be at least 1 if i is equal to 0 this is meaningless so if this is meaningless then we can simply replace by 0 so this is exactly that so if i is more than 0 it is simply prefix sum of i minus 1 if i is 0 it is simply 0 and this is the prefix sum till then and what how to store in the map we can store in the map what is the value and what is the sum what is the prefix sum so it is simply x comma prefix sum plus 3 into v of i this is what we exactly discussed so we are storing this in a map and after storing in the map then what is the pair that we want the pair we want is simply value comma sum so if this is already in the map then add to the answer so find if this is in the map if this is in the map then simply count the answer where it is equal to id dot second which is the frequency of this pair so simply we can find the answer if you have any doubts comment below see you in the next video